Another year of television has come and gone, so it's time to sell some scores. Who's up, who's down, and who's surprising in the ratings? And most importantly, what is the lowest rated TV channel of 2022? I'm Benzi Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'm ready to find out. Nielsen ratings are a viewership metric that is quite literally as old as television itself. Every show broadcast on linear television in the US scars up little boxes of data and numbers that helps the circle of life on commercially driven TV, of advertising, supporting programming, presenting advertising, go around. In an increasingly fragmented TV landscape, Nielsen's numbers aren't as definitive as they used to be, and there's plenty of open questions as to whether the data can be improved or if it's still accurate enough for advertisers to go by. Some media conglomerates are looking to incorporate alternate data sources into their strategies amid more frustration with Nielsen than ever before. But consider this. Outside of linear television, viewership data for streaming services is basically a black box. There are no comparable numbers, and there's no real incentive for the likes of Netflix to even provide them. They can do whatever they want with that data, using and abusing it as they please, and as we learned from Netflix in 2022, the lack of external oversight allows for streaming services to weaponize their data to further the most unscrupulous aims of their corporate executives. Say what you will about Nielsen, but the fact that their data is independent and publicly accessible adds a layer of transparency and accountability that I honestly think we should protect and improve, not denigrate. With that said, let's take a look at Nielsen's roundup of 2022's television network ratings averages, based on the traditional primetime scheduling hours. First stop on the list, of course, is the major broadcast networks, and there is a real upset this year. Taking the number one crown this year, just, is NBC averaging 5.148 million viewers versus CBS's 5.144 million. CBS has traditionally led, crowing about its high perch each year, but now this is the second time in recent years that the peacock has flown to the top, the other recent occasion being 2018. CBS used to handily lead by margins of nearly a million or more just a few years ago. NBC's 2018 gold medal was on the back of such a surge, but in 2021, NBC was able to cut the gap to just 90,000, priming themselves for another shot at the ring's crown. ABC slid by 6% to land at just under 3.9 million, Fox punches another double-digit decline to 3.2 million viewers, but the CW craters by 29% from 813,000 to 574,000 viewers, perhaps spurred on by the volatility of the network's sale to local station operator Nexstar Media Group. Among smaller fish, Ion proved surprisingly resilient, dropping only 23,000 viewers this year to land at a million 23,000. Its owners at Scripps are looking to invest in the network now that the dust of acquiring it and making it the centerpiece of a group of multicast brands has settled. Top of the pure subchannel multicasters, MeTV dips to 688,000. Worse than last year, but now a worse percentage loss in the industry trend. On to cable television, HGTV keeps its lease as the top entertainment channel for a second year in a row, though down by 13% to a million 81,000 viewers. It and Hallmark Channel at a million 34,000 are now the only two cable networks, outside news and sports of course, to attract ratings of over a million viewers. There were five such channels last year after Discovery lost the honor. TLC is now third on that roster at 971,000 viewers after managing a smaller drop than TNT to 965,000 and TBS, which has sunk 15% this year to 875,000. History bests Discovery by 15,000 rather than 5 this year and Food Network at 779,000, the Religion Turned Western Channel INSP at 778,000 and USA Network at 738,000 to round out the top 20. The gap between Bravo and Lifetime narrows to just 6,000 after both take dips in the teens. AMC manages to eke out the same lead against FX, both tied last year. FX's comedy sibling FXX is also up 23% this year to 246,000, as they hope to build the brand into the adult animation haven Adult Swim, TBS, and Comedy Central all once wished they'd be. Paramount Network improves by 8% to 491,000 off the back of Yellowstone's success. Game Show Network seems okay at 361,000, 
and Freeform's 301,000 bests MTV's 288,000 in the battle between them for young adults, though both are down by nearly a third. Oxygen True Crime both seemingly insists you include the genre in the name, and it's also up by a tenth to 331,000 after launching on broadcast TV in some markets. The first major cable channel to be so available since MTV2 filled out contracts on low power stations between 2001 and 2015. Not just as an anachronism of its time as a music channel, but an artifact of Viacom's 1999 acquisition of The Box, a rival service at that time. Not to be confused with the ongoing UK channel by that name, which was spun off of this one, itself presently threatened by a rebrand from its current owners, Channel 4. Oxygen's backdoor competitor, HLN, died a death this year with the end of its original purpose as a news channel. It lands at 211,000 after a 12% slide from 239,000 in 2021. They both have some work to do if they want to challenge HLN's bigger sibling, Investigation Discovery, however, who's making a killing at 566,000 viewers, softening its ratings blow from 17% last year down to 12% this year. Kids TV continues to be honestly the most volatile segment on cable, and 2022 brought shocks and surprises both in strategy and in numbers. Staying top of the roost this year is Nickelodeon. While it's still down by 14% to 287,000 viewers, it's a much better fall than the 30% plus skydives it's taken in the past two years. Second out of the big three, surprisingly, is Cartoon Network, which has fallen by only 20,000 viewers from last year to 181,000, only barely residing Disney Channel in the third place at 178,000, another 25% hint to its ratings average. Seemingly in defiance of all expectation, and in spite of the brutal and violent murders it took to its content in 2022, Cartoon Network managed the smallest raw audience loss out of the three major kids' channels. I was fully expecting to be reporting on a Cartoon Network slash to 150, 120, or even 100,000 viewers this year, but the animation brand has apparently proved itself hardier than I gave it credit for. That said, Cartoon Network is still in a dangerous place, as it tries to bolster its content slate and reputation at the same time in 2023. And while the channel's ratings average may not have fallen that low, new episodes of the channel's current series have, on an increasingly regular basis. It's perhaps most prominent with CN's Cartoon Neo Preschool programming, which is frequently rated in the five figures and has had its airtime slashed considerably since its launch. Given I've set the bar previously for Cartoon Network, it's now time to be concerned for the future of Disney Channel, which prior to this year suffered ratings plunges in excess of 30% in all three years since it began to be tracked by Nielsen in 2019. Its commercial-free nature excluded it from this ranking previously, and it punched in at 534,000 pre-pandemic. A few of Disney Channel's more ambitious series have already been reprioritized as Disney Plus series first which creates cause for concern about future content in the same manner that Cartoon Network has been grappling with the past few years. Heading downstairs to the second tier, Nicktoons stands at 65,000, only shaving 2,000 viewers off last year's total, though 2021 was a considerable drop for the channel. Its sister Teen Nick stands at 43,000, up 6,000 on last year, though more than ever it still feels like a shell of its former self. Disney XD sits at 53,000 and Boomerang at 52,000, down by a depressing 36 and 32% respectively. In the basement of Kids TV's third tier, which always seems to keep rising, stands Discovery Family at 38,000, down 5,000, and Universal Kids, down 34% to 23,000. Adjacent to Kids TV, Adult Swim takes a massive 37% drop to 245,000 viewers, just under the surging FXX amid real questions about its own future content and strategy. Nick at Night lands at 283,000, just 4,000 below the day side average, so now I can reiterate my call to just kill the block already, as I insist that TV Land continues to do the job much better. It's actually up by 3,000 viewers to 521,000, a world away in terms of reach. But it's now time to reach for the bottom of the barrel and find out for certain what is the lowest rated TV channel of 2022? Fuse, mentioned in a previous year, is down to 8,000, so it could be the champion soon enough. 2020 lowest comedy.tv stays at 4,000, and 2021 bottom B in sport remains at 3,000, but there's someone lower than even them this year. In 159th position, garnering a mere 1,000 viewers. The lowest rated TV channel in 2022 is... 
G4, the relaunched version of the revered gaming and geek culture network that was originally shut down in 2014, before it was powered back on by its owners, with some of its old programming and entirely new concepts, in November 2021. It wouldn't even make it the whole year, despite spanning operations across cable, YouTube, Twitch, and free streaming platforms like Pluto TV, the channel wasn't able to generate enough viewership or revenue to be viable at shutdown on November 18th. As much as the channel had a fan base, G4 had an uphill battle to reintroduce itself in a gaming culture that has grown and evolved almost entirely without it in the years since the channel's original closure. A lack of audience strategy or focused leadership certainly didn't help. Complicating matters further was simply the nature of streaming online. Even the most popular streamers on Twitch, or YouTube for that matter, simply don't get enough of an audience to make a project like this work there. I've brought up here and in the past that a lot of the cable channels that are struggling the most with making an investment into traditional content production a viable endeavor are currently somewhere on the range of 100,000 viewers. Even if you're generous and take 100,000 as the floor for viability and profitability, that's a level that's basically unattainable for live streamers online. And many of these streamers are one-man bands, or at most small teams, who, despite lacking in finances, invested a lot more time into getting where they are. Maybe major esports tournaments can get to that level, sure, but despite those productions being more comparable in complexity, they probably only have to keep that up for a few days a year, not all the time. And despite considerable growth in the free ad-supported television, or fast, streaming channel sector, it's still challenging territory to build an audience through. G4 needed cable traction to work, and they lost that momentum in the channel's original downfall and closure, with the bungled plans to relaunch the channel space's Esquire Network in 2013. That channel instead replaced the female-focused Style Network and only lasted until June 2017, essentially taking two channels down with it in a way. Even if 1,000 viewers isn't an accurate number, the audience they would be bringing in through other platforms wouldn't be large enough to supplant cable viewership entirely. And perhaps that's where things stand in this seemingly ever-expanding content landscape. At least for now. The numbers will keep changing, and new decisions will be made taking that information into account. Even when the moves don't make sense. Maybe especially so. Being able to double-check the data yourself is a powerful and welcome tool to help better understand some of the more mysterious parts of television. Hit subscribe for more analysis and all the latest from the world of television. You can support these videos further and get exclusive bonuses for as little as $3 a month at benjj.tk join. You can compare this against the ratings averages from 2021 in this video, up here or down in the description. I'll see you next time.